Hi, I'm Eitan Ibschitz, and I'm here to talk to you about Google Cloud Migration Center. Google Cloud Migration Center is a one-stop shop for all your cloud migration needs. It helps you estimate cloud migration costs, assess your current environment, plan your migration, and execute it smoothly. With Google Cloud Migration Center, you can estimate the costs of running your workloads on Google Cloud Platform, assess your current environment, generate TCO reports for different migration scenarios, and identify the applications that are a good fit for the cloud. In addition, you can plan your migration and create a migration roadmap, and finally, migrate your applications to the cloud quickly and easily. Migration Center is consumed as a managed service directly from Cloud Console. In order to load it, I will search for Migration Center in the search bar, and you then need to enable the API in order to use it. Once the API is enabled, you can go to the home screen and start using it immediately. The fastest and simplest way to get started is with Cloud Spend Estimator. Google Cloud Spend Estimator is a tool that can be used in minutes and without connecting to your environment. It helps you estimate your potential costs for using Google Cloud Platform, GCP. It does this by analyzing your current IT environment and providing you with a report that shows how much you could expect to spend on GCP if you migrated your workloads to the cloud. The report includes information on the following, the estimated costs for your current IT environment, the et estimated costs for your workloads on GCP, and the potential savings you could achieve by migrating to GCP. Cloud Spend Estimator includes a number of calculators to estimate the costs of running your infrastructure, SAP, and data warehouse on GCP. It can also estimate the licensing costs that you may have when migrating your Microsoft and Oracle workloads to GCP. In order to create a new estimate, you need to click on Get Initial Cost Estimate, give it a name, and add the estimator that is relevant for your workload. I would use the on-premises calculator for the purpose of this demonstration and show you how it's used. I'll click Add to Estimate, then Start Estimate, and finally, Start to get started. I'll select the region that I'm planning to run my workloads in. I'll click Next, and then I'm asked to fill out information about the infrastructure that I would like to migrate. I'm going to say that I have 1,000 virtual CPUs. I can click on Edit Compute Sizing Details, and here I can see and change the utilization parameters for compute and set the memory to compute ratio. I will set my storage usage to one petabyte of storage used across all of my infrastructure. Just like for CPUs, I can click on Edit Storage Sizing Details to fine-tune the storage parameters and assumptions. I'll use the defaults for networking settings, but you can, change, you can change those according to your specific requirements. At this point, you can see the estimated cost of running this infrastructure on GCP on the top right corner here. And I'll click Next to specify additional information about the workloads and licenses that are moving to GCP. You can provide details on your Oracle and SAP workloads if you have any. I'll tick the Oracle checkbox, and this will show new fields for sizing Oracle workloads. I can set what percentage of the virtual CPUs will be used for different Oracle workloads, and even more so, I can click on Edit Oracle Sizing Details to fine-tune Oracle settings for the customer-specific use case. Now, I can specify the operating systems that I'm using and their associated licenses. So I'll say that I'm moving a mix of Windows and Linux machines. I have 80% Windows, 10% Red Hat Linux, and 10% SUSE Linux. Note that this will be calculated for the 800 virtual CPUs which aren't used by Oracle. You can click on this button to check if your current licensing is applicable to bring with you. I'll select BYOL, and I can also decide if I'm going to bring my own license or use pay-as-you-go for the Linux licenses, in addition to choosing the pricing track for the Linux licenses. If you have any SQL servers that will be moving, you can specify those here and also determine if you may bring your licenses with you. Next, you can apply any additional discounts that your customer is entitled to. You can specify how long it will take to prepare your landing zone and make changes to the migration timeline and see how it affects your costs over time. Once you submit the estimate, you can click on View Details and see the migration ramp over time 
and the estimated cost for each year in addition to the more detailed information about the actual skills and licenses costs for this estimate. The next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can automatically discover or manually import the data about your infrastructure. To do so, I will click on the Discover Assets box and click Add Data. Here, I can select if I want to scan my environments or upload a file containing all the necessary information. If you choose to scan the environment, you need to provide the details below and get a link to download, it, to download Discovery Client which you will have to install in your VSphere environment to scan and collect the data. In this demo, I will show you how you can use the data that was exported by RV tools and import it into Migration Center. I will select Upload Files, give the job a name, and select the Excel RV tools format to upload my data. I will select the file which was previously exported from my environment and click Upload Files. and then click Import Data to add the data to the Migration Center. I will now click Go to Assets to see all the assets that were just imported. I can now click on one of the assets to see more insights. For each asset, I can see its fit score, allocated resources, metadata, and performance usage when collected. Another important capability in Migration Center is the ability to group assets together, which is needed in order to create TCO reports. I will create three groups, one for all the Windows assets, one for the Linux ones, and one for all assets. And then we will later see how these groups are used to generate reports and simulate different migration scenarios. I will create a Windows group by filtering all Windows assets and adding them to a group. Now, I will do the same for the Linux group and for the All Assets group. The next thing that I'm going to do is configure some migration preferences. Migration preferences is where we can create different scenarios for the migration and compare those in our TCO reports. I'll show you how we can create fine-tuned migration preferences by clicking Create Migration Preferences. First, we want to give it a meaningful name. Then, we can select the region in which we want to run our migrated workloads. And then, we can select if we want to run our workloads in Google Cloud VMware Engine or GCV, uh, Google Cloud Compute Engine or GCE, or use sole tenant nodes. For this preference, I will select GCV. Then we can select the sizing optimization for those workloads, and in this case, we will select the moderate strategy. You can see the target utilization below, and you can choose to use a predefined strategy or create a custom one. For the GCV target, we can select the overcommit ratio for CPUs and memory, and also storage deduplication. I'm happy with the recommended defaults here, so I will leave them as is. The next setting is egress. Here, I can configure how much of the outgoing network traffic will be considered as egress, and I'll leave the 5% default as is. The last thing that you can configure is the pricing track. In the pricing track, you can select your customer's preferred pricing track and the discounted prices will be used in the TCO report. 
I'll now create another preference to see how much it will cost me to run on GCE. In the GCE scenario, you can select the preferred compute instance types, disk allocation, and licensing model. You can again change the sizing strategy, egress percentage, and price interest, which I will configure to be on par with the GCBE settings for comparison. Now, I'll go ahead and create a DCO report and simulate how much it will cost us to run these workloads in a few different scenarios and see how our target runtime and licensing affects the pricing. I will simulate three scenarios in this report, one for running all our workloads on GCBE, one for running our Windows workloads on GCBE and Linux on GCE, and the last one for running all our workloads on GCE. I'm going to select the Windows group, Linux group, and all group to use all of them in the report. For the all assets group, I'll select both the GCV and the GCE preferences. For the Linux group, I'm going to select the GCE preference, and for the Windows group, I'm going to select both the GCV and GCE preferences for easy comparison. I'll go ahead and click Generate Report, and it will take a few seconds to generate it. I'll now click on the report to look at the TCO in different scenarios. In the report, I can see a high-level flow of the Google approach to migration. Scrolling down, I can see the groups and assets that are assessed in this report, the summary findings, and also the findings for each group individually. In addition, for each group, I can see the preferences that were used, and below that, I can see the cost breakdown for this group and each of its preferences. I can see that running all the Linux assets on GCE will cost almost $2,500 per month on a three-year three committed use discount. I can also see the specific costs for compute, operating system, storage, network egress, and others. Moving ahead to the Windows assets, I can again see the summary, preferences, and lastly, the pricing for each of the preferences. You can see in this report that running just nine VMs on GCV may not be the most economical things, uh, taking into consideration the minimum price for running a GCV cluster. In addition, you can see the cost differences in the operating system line, because in the GCV case, I can bring my existing Microsoft licenses with me. And lastly, I will look at the All Assets group to see how much it will cost to run all of my assets on both GCV and GCE. To summarize, I just showed you how I've used Migration Center to create ad hoc pricing estimates, import information about my on-prem or cloud assets into Migration Center, group them together into meaningful groups, create migration preferences for different migration scenarios, and lastly, generate a TCO report simulating the cost of running my assets in a few different scenarios. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and happy migrating.